morning guys june 11th saturday well just wanted to kind of give you an idea of some of the stuff that we use organically here um we're probably 95 percent organic there are times where when you plant onions uh, you know a fertilizer heavy crop corn for you know onions we will use some commercial fertilizer you have to do it um <clears throat> but mostly we are organic um compost 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 uh, is number one today uh, and tomorrow it's going to be anywhere between 105 and 107 uh, extreme temperatures in fact let's talk about extreme weather I, I don't know what's going on you know I've been in Texas pretty much my whole life except for the time I was in the army traveling around the world but I, I don't remember the times where like in May and then in June it was this hot or extreme. And two years ago we had, you know, we had a blizzard for seven days, 12 inches of snow, shut down all of Texas. So we got to talk about it. Something is going on with the extreme weather. It could be cyclical. It could be whatever. I don't know. But we have to adjust to it. Uh, we've got to figure out, you know, what we're going to do. Um, our plants, you can water them all day all night but when the temperatures are that high you're not really going to produce much we are producing i've been harvesting a tomato here asian green beans here and there peppers but it's just it's just it's not going to work unless we get some kind of break in the weather but you know we'll manage there are products that we can use that will help if you're in the extreme hot weather of the south one of the, uh, the main things that uh, we use, um, th I think the most important thing to think about is when you feed your plants, you're not feeding your plants. I know that sounds weird. You're feeding the soil. You're feeding the microbes in the soil that in turn feed the plants. People think, oh, I'm gonna fertilize the plant. Well, you're not really doing that. You're fertilizing the soil. You're fertilizing the microbes in the so soil that will take that fertilizer it, change it and fertilize the roots of the plant. Horticultural molasses. You can order this on Amazon. I usually get it in like a two gallon container at the uh, the, the co-op, the farm co-op. I just, there's a lot of outages. There's a lot of crazy things going on. So I had to order this on Amazon. Horticultural molasses. What this does is it naturally feeds the microbes in the soil. Okay, it's gonna keep your soil healthy and nutrients healthy keep those microbes alive and it's a simple and last night I went around the whole garden I have a, a, a big five gallon food grade bucket you can get it your any your your uh, box stores Lowe's Home Depot um, so about a tablespoon to five gallons and you want to just drench the soil you want to just let that soak into the soil uh, it took me about 30, 40 minutes last night to go ahead and just go through all the garden. And I'll show you here in a minute. Horticultural molasses, guys, I'm telling you, if you apply this three, three or four times a year, it's going to really enhance your growth. Or in our case, it's going to keep your plants alive <laughs> when it's 105. Um, but good news. Hey, the forecast is saying next week it's only going to be 100, maybe 97. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, that's the case. You know, you know you're a Texan when you hope for a tropical storm. Anyway, uh, next thing that I want to talk about too is here's another important item that we use is liquid seaweed. Seaweed has been used for gardening for years, hundreds of years, over in Europe, especially in Ireland. Um, but liquid seaweed, what it does, it has a compound in it that you could foliar your feed or you can drench the soil. What it does is it makes, it toughens the plant. It's like, in our case, putting sunblock on the foliage, protecting it from extreme temperatures, not only sun, but extreme cold. So this time of the year, I will foliar your feed. I will take my sprayer and I'll put, oh, a tablespoon or two tablespoons, and I'll fill the rest of this, a quart of water, a uh, half a gallon actually. The sprayer is really cheap. Um, mix it with water and then just foliar your feed in the evening. Just spray lightly mist your foliage. Try to get underneath the leaves as well too. That really will help toughen the leaves during extreme temperatures. Um, another thing that works too, the same kind of element 
in the seaweed would be aspirin. I know it's weird. I'll have to do the, the science about that. I don't have the actual chemical name, <clears throat> excuse me, but you could take and break up a piece of aspirin and put it in, in the same kind of container water and spray the foliage and it kind of does the same thing as well too. So liquid seaweed. Now let's talk about feeding. Um, another foliar feeding or a drenching feeding would be fish fertilizer. And let me tell you guys, your neighbors are gonna hate you because it stinks when you apply it, but our neighbors are cool because we share our vegetables with them. <coughs> Excuse me. But fish fertilizer, if it's a 511, so it's pretty much just nitrogen. I think this foliar feeding is better than drenching, but I do add a little bit when I do my, my drenching with the molasses. Um, so fish fertilizer is really good. Again, like for a half a gallon, a capful or a tablespoon. Um, I would say once every two weeks, depending on the season, how far you're along. When your plants are first starting out, I would do it once a week. Um, it really will help the foliage and it'll, it'll provide nitrogen softly and naturally to the plant through the leaves. Um, I use also too, and I mentioned it before, uh, Medina has to grow. It's kind of a combination of everything that we just talked about. So I will, I will use that as well too. Now for pest prevention, that's another story. Um, we planted our squash in the Hugo culture garden and I'll take you over there. Uh, and the squash borers just killed it plus the heat. Uh, we had no rain in May, which we're supposed to have tons of rain in May. It's not supposed to be 100 degrees in May. Uh, average temperatures are upper 80s, but we had a very difficult spring or May with hardly any rain. We got those couple of storms that I was filming, but normally we get rain at least two times a week. We get heavy thunderstorms and the temperatures are normally in the upper 80s. We were in the upper 90s and 100 too. Um, so we lost pretty much all of our squash in the Hugo culture guard. But the cool thing about Texas is, is we can grow all year round. Um, I, mean, I just popped more seeds in, just kept putting seeds in, just fortified, put more mulch. Uh, the other day uh, during my lunch period, I, I just filled the garden with more mulch. The only thing I could find at the box stores was a cedar mulch, but that's fine. We're, we're heavy in um, lime here in Texas. Um, and if I have to, I could add more granule lime to balance the pH from the acid and the cedar. But hey, desperate times call for whatever. You got to mulch everything. So I put about a good two to three inches of mulch all over the garden. Uh, and hopefully that'll cool the soil down uh, here, you know, today when it's 105 and tomorrow when it's 105 and 107. And who knows how long this is going to last. Um, but we've been, we were invaded by the squash borer. It happens. I was too busy worrying about watering and I didn't really worry about pest prevention, but uh, diatomaceous earth is something that I'm using now again, and I always use it. And I'll show you how I applied it around the, the base of the squash. Uh, that squash borer is just terrible. It just gets in there, that worm, and it just goes bores right through and just kills your squash. Uh, this is cool too. If you order this, I got this at Harris, diatomaceous earth, crawling insect killer. I got this on Amazon just so I could have it quick. And it comes with this little little spray or a puffer. You put it in here and it it puffs the diatomaceous earth. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Another thing too is neem oil extract. Garden safe. This is really good if you want to hit the foliage. We had um, the milkweed beetle. Oh my god! And I think it came in when we purchased the pine needle mulch. Uh, if you bring any kind of product in to your homestead or your, your garden, you, you may be bringing in pests. And it happened. Um, we had planted um, uh, beets, um, just different varieties of beets, and we lost the first round of beets. And I'm, I'm outside looking, and I did a video on it as well too. Turnips, we lost all of our turnips, so we'll just wait till the fall to plant those. I'm not worried about it. September, October, we'll be planting all kinds of fall vegetables that we'll be harvesting in December, November, December, and even in January. Remember, it's not gonna get cold here until January, February. Um, but I went ahead and used the, the neem oil, and I also used the um, Safer Insecticide Soap. So I combined those two together, um, and it, it killed them. It took time, it just took a process. 
and I had to go out there actually too and, and grab them and squish them with my fingers. Very invasive, they were very aggressive. Overnight they could just take a whole plant and just eat it to death. Fire ants, guys. Uh, hate them. Um, they're red ants. They, they come, they're Africanized. They come from um, Africa. They're fire ants. They're all over Texas. They're all over the South. Um, we, we you know we do pretty good. Uh, I can spot a mound uh, when, it, when it pops up and I'll take water and I'll take orange oil. This, I got this and it has the actual chemical in it that you want it to have, um, the balance in there. Um, and I got this for, I think, $5 at the Dollar Tree. A uh, couple of capfuls or tablespoons. I put a half a cup to, to, um, to like a gallon bucket and I'll drench the mound and it'll kill everything. It'll kill them fire ants. So uh, we stay on it. We really don't have a problem. We cannot grow potatoes in the ground here. I've tried many, many times. I've tried different techniques. Um, every time we do, for sure, fire ants just consume the whole potatoes. The, the mound. I'm not doing that anymore. I have uh, five gallon buckets on grow tables. And again, I'll take you over there and show you too. So if you're growing potatoes in the ground and you're in Texas, be careful. Because when you're watering that area, those fire ants are attracted to that area uh, and they're gonna just invade. And you can't put anything, you don't wanna put orange oil on your potatoes, it'll kill the vines. So we're growing on containers on a lifted grow bed. So awesome guys, it's nice and cool. It's uh, probably around 85 right now at 10 a.m. <laughs> but um, I just kind of wanted to show you some of the things that we... This little guy here, every time I'm, I'm filming... Come here, Bones. Oh, now you're camera shy? Every time I'm filming, he makes a cameo. <laughs> hey, are you protecting the garden from them squirrels? Huh? guys so we're in the garden hey just so y'all know i know it's silly but every time i'm filming i'm wearing the same white shirt i promise you i have like six or eight of them <laughs> when it's hot like this i'm wearing the same white shirt but anyway let's take a look so we applied a ton of mulch <clears throat> this is the chow mei a korean melon it's doing very good we're getting blooms even in the extreme temperatures we planted okra it's doing good carrots are hanging in there again with the mulch the tomatoes are producing not as much as we would like but we are getting fruit um, more squash again we're cyclical we're planting everything we got more tomatoes on here San Marzonos the beans are doing good everything along the fence is doing great uh, this morning I harvested some Asian long beans uh, these are really cool uh, they'll grow um, 12 inches or so and you want to harvest them pretty much when they're thin like this I'll give this another maybe this afternoon or tomorrow morning I'll harvest that uh, we've got a bunch in the house we're just gonna chop them little one inch pieces and stir fry them uh, they're really good let's go over here and take a look at the peppers peppers are doing good we're gonna harvest these little little banana peppers and pickle them I like those Sriracha, jalapenos. We've got some pretty good peppers on here. We just need to let them go a little more. Um, everything in the pots are doing good. They're not really producing very much. These uh, pear tomatoes, they're producing and we're eating them. But, I mean, look at the foliage. Look at the foliage on this cherry tomato. It's just the heat. And I keep them watered really well. So what I'll probably do is prune the dead parts off. Um, and we'll see what happens here shortly. The Armenian cucumbers, they're doing really good. I'm surprised with the heat, but the foliage is keeping them all shaded. We've got lot, lots of blooms. We should here, hopefully, start getting some cucumbers coming out. It will. It's just a matter of time, and hopefully we get a rain here pretty soon. Grow table's doing good. I'm going to be finishing off the, the series on that. We've been harvesting a lot of lettuce. Uh, I'll, I'll be finishing off that series. I'll probably post that probably Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we started that in March, so it'll be a good series uh, video. Potatoes. 
Fingling potatoes are doing really good in these pots. Horseradish doing good. Here's another chili pepper. Uh, these uh, San Marzano tomatoes are doing better, obviously because they're under shade cover. I think what I'm going to do next year is invest in more shade cover. Um, I used to. I, I had shade cover like this over the entire garden last year. Uh, it just tore up on me and I didn't reinvest. I should have, but I'm going to go ahead and buy a huge uh, shade cover like the one that we have over here, the, the Hugo Culture Garden. Uh, I'll, I'll buy two or three of them and put them all over um, the main garden. Problem is, next year will probably be flooded out. <laughs> Everything's extreme. All right, we got new squash coming up. Like I said, you know, we planted new seeds. Um, diatomaceous earth, put them down at the base of the plant. Absolutely, we'll, we'll hope that this squash uh, worm does not get it this time. I'll be diligent. Uh, here's our uh, 30 gallon grow table. Uh, for those of you here in the South that have uh, fire ants, I would recommend building something like this. Uh, I got the plans on Hollis and Nancy's homestead. Um, I'll put that link here in the comments, but this is amazing. I didn't think we were going to have sweet potatoes. Here are your regular sweet potatoes, and here's the Japanese purple ones. I didn't think these were going to make it, but they're just doing really good. There's no ants in here. The table is lifted off the ground. Um, I'm going to probably extend... Um, this trellis next year, double the height so they can climb, but they're doing really well. The Yukons are doing good right here. And another 30 gallon here of fingerlings. Love fingerling potatoes. All the different colors. So, hey, I think we're going to have a good harvest. What I'll do is I've got some tarp. I'll put some tarp on the ground. We'll dump these out and go through everything. So, looking good. Um... The goji berries, look at this. They're just going crazy. I'm going to have to come out here later on and trim them because they're flowering. I'm going to probably come out here and just trim them down a little bit. But they're doing good and they're going to be ready to plant all over the property. We're on a little less than a half an acre. It's an urban homestead. It's small. That's fine. You don't have to have a lot of property, a lot of land to homestead. Permaculture. Look, if you've got grass growing, you can plant a garden. Uh, and we are thinking of expanding a second garden on the other side. Um, and we're probably going to do um, raised beds, garden tables, things like that. So we'll probably be thinking about expanding. Um, so yeah, that looking good. We're going to make it through the heat. We did uh, some mulching. Uh, we did a deep soaking last night. Um, as far as watering, I think we're done until Sunday evening. We'll, we'll check and see what's going on with everything. But yeah, we're going to hang out this weekend and I'm going to take you guys into the kitchen and we're going to make homemade pasta. We'll see you then. I wanted to bring you guys out here to show you um, the goji berries. They're doing really well. Um, I am going to go ahead and trim them. I'm going to cut them down a little bit. because they're just really getting tall. There we go. And those of you others that are doing this too, I know Rob at 4D Ranch, he's growing his. Hey, let us know how they're doing. Uh, we, we did learn this, uh, this plant uh, from Danny and Wanda at Deep South. They're amazing, good folks, a lot of knowledge. And we really enjoy watching their channel. But yeah, there we go. I got those cut back. Uh, it's hot. It's going to be 107, so I'm going to be going inside. Use, um, and you know, we're doing the best that we can. Um, we'll make it. I think they'll be here in a week or two, maybe three, some kind of tropical disturbance. We don't want a hurricane for the folks that live down on the coast, Corpus Christi, South Padre. Um, but a nice little tropical storm that could come up and break this high pressure would be good to help us out. But if not, then, hey, we'll do what we can with the spring, summer garden. But we're really looking forward to the fall, winter garden. That's when everything is just beautiful and we produce a lot of food. Um, one cool thing, and I'll show you guys, is um, our tomatoes are very sporadic right now because of the heat. Y you know, you'll have maybe five, six tomatoes like San Marzano on the vine. Uh, and one of them or two of them will start to turn red. We'll pick them right when they start to turn red and we'll 
bring them in the house and we'll let them uh, ripen in the house because if not, the bugs are gonna get them or blight. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's take you for a look around. Also too, tomorrow I'm making homemade pasta. You're gonna love it. Well, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed those simple little garden tips. Hey, the organic way, it's worked pretty good for us over years. Um, but yeah, give it a try. Use some of them products. If you have any questions, hey, put some comments in there. We'll talk about it in detail. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I am gonna be making pasta. I think that's gonna come out later in the week. I wanna really take my time and do a good job. I wanna show you guys how to make raviolis, all different kinds of uh, types of pasta. So that'll be fun. Hey, appreciate you guys. Hey, pray for us for some rain or something. It's really bad, uh, but like, we'll make it. Hey, God bless you guys. See y'all next time.